plunderers of the British Israelites, remnants of a glorious Christian sect that took shape during the Victorian era, are holding their annual convocation. And until recent years, we have stood in the world playing our The fundamental belief of this Christian of sect of is that the British originate in the ten lost tribes, more precisely the tribe of Dan. The British, then, are the people of the covenant. Mere happenstance, you say? The British Israelites don't believe in coincidences. According to this British legend, after their exile, the tribes of Israel were dispersed throughout the world and mingled with various nations. But the blessings of God continued to favor them. Witness the mighty power of the British Empire. To the understanding of impose upon them. The Scottish Declaration of Independence, dated 1320, claims that the Hebrew ancestors of the Scots reached the British Isles about 1,200 years after the exodus from Egypt. Matthew, a proud Scot, identifies deeply with the ancient Hebrew heritage of his people. The kingdom of God is utter rubbish. Yet above us gleams the highway of salvation and our exodus from this Egypt and its sea of reeds. And its sea of reeds. My own family, there, were one, there was one in every generation that, that actually carried on the knowledge. And um, I, I know my grandmother used to say, uh, there is some talk that we are the ten tribes. But it wasn't until I, I saw the whole scope of this on a big scale um, that I really began to uh, see uh, the kingdom in terms of the, of the twelve tribes. And um, it made the Bible a completely new book to me. This was the ancestor of Jesse, who was the father of David. So, and the line of David goes right down um, to the kings of Scotland, and then, as we heard this afternoon, the kings of, of kings and queens of England, right down to our present queen. She right down to our British present queen. Israelism. She is the idea first Asia. became popular in the 1800s, and today it is still being promoted by groups such as those that follow a white supremacist ideology called Christian identity. Now, according to British Israelism, the British people are the modern-day descendants of the tribe of Ephraim, and the European settlers who ended up in the United States are the modern-day descendants of Manasseh. Our exodus from this Egypt. Our exodus from this Egypt. Our exodus from this Egypt. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha HaKwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to you, other brethren. Honors to you, brethren, you followers of the truth, and shalom to the elect. Anyway, I want to go in this video here. I kind of want to touch on this video uh, because there's a thing called white Hebrew Israelism. Now I'm not going to go into that too much because there is different sectors of that as well. And then you have the ultimate um, Israelism um, of theft, right? But I want to talk about the British Hebrew Israelism, okay? This is a so-called cult, which a cult, the word cult is not a bad word, but for the sake of what they sense it to be right so you have white hebrew israelism you have these group of europeans britain britain europeans who believe that they were from the chosen li line not that some of our people aren't amongst the britons remember and that's what i'm going to get into i'm gonna to try to hit a couple articles quick and just you know kind of go around it a little bit because we got to go into the history and even um just a couple things I want to go into. But first, I'll read a scripture before I do that. Luke 8 and 17 says, For nothing in secret that shall not be made manifest, 
neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So this truth is bringing out a whole lot of different avenues and, um, you know, basically a lot of different areas of things uh, that haven't came out, different dynamics, so to speak. So um, we want to go here. I want to just check this out. This is quite a few things, but I just want to try to hit a couple of points. This right here is King well, not King James. I'll get to that soon. Um, this right here is smooth. Uh, what is this called? Um, King Kenneth the Third, the Niger. Okay, it says here, uh, Kenneth the Third of Scotland. Okay, and um, Kenneth the Third of Scotland from 997 to 105 the Moors were dominant in Scotland which we know the Moors were so called black people the Moor, where Moor means black or you could say death it just means black um, the Moors um, were dominant in Scotland in the 10th century and this is ironic because they were going into the um, things about the Israelites in that, in that time frame which in some cases they were right on, but it wasn't them. Okay? So you think just because you just took a people's heritage and nationality, you claim it to be yours, and it's not really these so called people's fault, so to you know, so to speak. It is because they're reincarnated to themselves, but they don't even know. Right? So it says, um, one of them was known as King Kenneth, sometimes as Niger, or dub, uh, dubbed a uh, surname, which means the black man, meaning everybody knew at that time. So we didn't, it wasn't unusual to have a so-called black man in, in, in Scotland and in that era, because we was in that era. So we didn't have to say, okay, the black man, like Phineas. Phineas is known as the Egyptian Negro, uh, the, the lineage of Aaron, right? Um, the grandson of Aaron. So we know Moses had to be so-called black too, and he was in Egypt. So it wasn't a thing of that. It's just that when you, was, you had a different, darker complexion that may have stood out, and you might have had a distinct, darker look, then that's what it would have stood out. It wasn't that the fact that they had to call him the Niger or the black man because it, it, it was a whole bunch of white people and then all of a sudden, uh, let's make a distinction on him. He was definitely black. Just like Jesus, the one you call Jesus, Yahawashah, and Solomon, you know, uh, um, the scriptures talking about Judah, Judah being black. It didn't have to say that because it was already known. The only reason why you would say that is to make a distinction from other people and that wasn't necessary. Right, that wasn't necessary to have to do that, because we were already so-called black. So we're like King da was it David? Uh, David, when he said he's uh, ruddy, which ruddy is not technically red, right? That's why Genesis don't say he was ruddy all over like a hairy garment. There's a there's different reddish textures, just like white. When you go into what is that? Um, Miriam being leprous white as snow when you go in the blue letter and look at white it doesn't say white I mean it says white but there's no definition but when you go into another uh, uh, definition of saying the, the um, her visage was white or what was that a lamentation um, the Nazarenes were white whiter than milk it has a definition there saying purity because that's what it was describing anyway you could do a lot of research on that and put it together. It says in a surname, which means the black man, it is uh, uh, historical. It is historical fact that Niger, Vol Doof, Doob, lived and reigned over certain black divisions of Scotland. Right? So, we see here um, and that a race known as the sons of the blacks succeeded him in history. Last king of Scotland succeeded to the throne through the system of 
of Tanisty, uh, something of that nature, whereby the successor, succession was shared between two family lines and the dying king named the person from the other family line who was to succeed him. The system was much discredited as, as it ensured the two royal families of Scotland were in constant, or a constant state of the war with each other. So you had our, you know, you had our people, right? Even in the time of King James going up to the 1600s, which he died before the actual uh, Bible was finished being published. But then you had the Adumians, which were under us, and they slowly using um, guile and schemes and supplanting was able to get advantage over us and start taking the throne. You know, that's, it, doesn't, it just doesn't go down overnight. But our history before the 1500s is not taught in the schools. With the dark ages, how they put that stipulation on being dark and black being so bad. But when you really look at it, when these people came into power in the late 1300s, 1400s, they brought hell on the earth. Now, mind you, while these people was coming into power, you still had Jake's in high positions of seats because remember you had a whole region ruling and you had different uh, sectors inside those regions. So you had the reformationists during the 1600s, uh, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. And, you know, that's when they start really coming into power. You know, well, they came in in the 1400s. Right. So I read, I want to go here too. Right here is a photo of King James, um, King King Charles James, I believe that's his real names, surname. Um, here's a comment someone left. It says, these are line cravings. Look at every line carving at work of that time period. You'll see everyone's skin can be depicted as dark. So then why would they want to do that? They managed to make everybody else pictures as white. And that's a damn lie. Okay. And maybe that is some form of the way they painted it. But remember the white Jesus was uh, painted or carved. Why was that white? Okay. Um, and then they didn't have to make his hair look like this. They didn't have to make his features look like this. Okay. Clearly you see this is not a white man. See, as long as he's white, there's nobody fighting to say that they're black. But when we say that so-called black, there's everybody fighting to say that they're white, even our own people. Our people can't stand to see power or want us to be in power. That's how badly beaten and broken down we are, you know? Right? That's how badly beaten and broken down we are. As long, nobody has a problem saying, well, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, he's... We know, if you got even white people say, no, nah, no, nah, you know, Jesus was not white. They know this. But there's no fight and outcry to say, wait a minute, the images. The images. There's there's no reason why he should be white. Maybe the colors faded and then maybe he looked white. They don't say that. They even said over time, these, these people are saying over time, the images were originally white and they got dark over the years. This is what they do, man. This is a sick people, man, who can't, who can't let it go. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and call, this is article, I don't know what it's called, realhistory.com. It's called the Black Britain, right? So the reason why I'm going into that, because you have these people who are saying that they're the real biblical Israelites, when clearly we dispersed into those different lands even over in Spain and we was in Europe and various other places that was us but it wasn't until this man came in power and I saw the, the chart and we're pretty much all out of there man you know so I'll get uh it's so many things on this maybe I'll try to leave the link in the description box um, here's some images here images right Duke Albert Right, we got Duke Albert, we got um, Czar Peter, which Tsar comes from C Caesar, Caesar, 
Peter the third, right? We got Duke. Uh, we can clearly see here Frederick the uh, Third, Elector Frederick the Third, in fifteen oh seven, right? And we're not even talking about by then they start coming into power. Um, uh, Valerianus Augustus, right, in one ninety three to two sixty, right. Because you had the, what you call the Holy Roman, you had the Holy Roman Black Empire. Where where the above people, let me see here. Um, Govert French, I'm just trying to get um, a couple of them. This man here is Gregory, uh, what's his name? Pope Gregory the First. So a lot of the Christian, Christian ways and the Christianity and the universalism was all really surrounded with our people man you know we're the, we're the formers of all things you know the most high is the form of all things but he set us up even on the left hand side to do wickedness to create things now he was a pope in uh, 590 AD you had uh, Saint Jerome who was responsible for the Latin Vulgate I don't see that up here but he was also a Jake and this is why we have him struggling with that word Gentile because our people wanted to adopt everybody, you know, everybody in, you know, universalize the religion, right? Pope Gregory, uh, Black Holy, here we go, Black Holy Roman Empire, 800 AD. I'll read this. In 799, for the third time in a half a century, a pope in need of help from the Frankish king after being physically attacked by his enemies in the streets of Rome, their stated intention uh, is to blind him and cut out his tongue to make him incapable of office. <laughs> Leo III makes his way through the Alps to visit Charlemagne, Pat Paderborn. It is not known what is agreed, but Charlemagne travels to Rome in 800 AD to support the Pope in ceremony of St. Peter's on Christmas Day. Leo uh, Leo and due to the anointed anointed Shalomon, the son of his heir, but unexpectedly is maintained that as Shalomon rises from prayer, the Pope places a crown on his head and acclaims him emperor. Now, another thing I'll go into, um, I was reading more in King James, uh, King Charles James, um, he was, I believe, became king at, uh, at the age of one. They said, this is crazy, I read on that. This is supposedly, um, he became king at the age of one. And there were several Bibles that he knew about that was written before the King James book, but he didn't agree with some of it. Okay? You had the Tinsdale Bible. And I believe that's mostly New Testament, or there's certain things that are not in there, you know, because they wanted that word Gentile in there. Okay, because the, the word Gentile was never originally in the Bible. So when you do the history on it, that was placed there for a reason, universalism. Right? This is a whole, it's a whole bunch on here. It's Charles V, King of France. And then this um, woman on here said something about the, the lineage of David. Um, that's, that was supposed to be a woman by the name of Tia Taffy that went up and slept with the king of France to keep the line of Judah going or something like that. So we know that the 10 lost tribes was carried away on uh, King Shalomazar the fifth, I believe, and then further into the other land, which was the Americas. That's in the Apocrypha. But uh, I did that in another video. Here's 1004 Charlemagne, right? These were not, see, this is the thing about white history. They cannot have never accept that we were in some form of power. We were in power. This is hard, and this is the pride. This is the pride of the Adumians, man. They can't accept that. And this is what you call the worst of Israelism, is white Israelism. Why? Because they've lied. These are the people that claim that the Europeans that came over here was the biblical Israelites, but then they're the ones that took and enslaved people and destroyed nations and damn near destroyed the world. But these were people of God. Yeah, right. What they brought in when they came over here, 
they brought the real Israelites into slavery. That's what actually happened because that was the curses, right? There's many, um, you know, scriptures on that. So you had King Kenneth the Niger, right? Let's go to, I'll read another scripture. Romans 9 to 26, 25. As he saith also in Hosea, or which you see this in Hosea, I will call them my people, which are not my people, which were not my people, and, and her beloved, which were not my, not beloved, right? And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall be said unto them, ye are the children of the living God. So the Most High is extreme. He can be very extreme. So the very people that you would think are not Israelites and the people who uh, are most lost would be his people, right? And remember, when you go into, I was reading a lot on it, they were, um, they set up different states and authorities in the Britain rule, right? And this is the same thing they did with the U.S., where they was, there was some Israelites sending the, uh, you know, some Edomians over here. Me and a brother had to talk about that. Uh, the brother, uh, Pasha, we was talking about that a little bit. And uh, he was enlightening me on some of this stuff as well as I was doing my research. And that's how they set up certain colonies or whatever the case is. You know, everything was up for grabs. So I'm not going to go on and on about it. I just wanted to read that. The uh, the people of the Bible are, are us. We're the only ones fit those curses, man. So I just wanted to bring out the fact that there is something called white Hebrew Israelism. That's just what it is. And uh, King James uh, helped authorize the transformation of the Britain flag as also I went and looked up. It's a lot of history that I can't even go on um, on and on about. It would be hours, man. You know, just read and do the research. That's all I have on that, Shalom.